name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table for all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. After a hymn of praise acknowledging God as a shelter for the poor, the prophet portrays a wonderful victory banquet at which death, which in ancient Cana was depicted as a monster swallowing up everything, will be swallowed up forever. The prophet urges celebration of this victory of salvation. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning at the first verse. O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with a shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right paths for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Though writing from prison and facing an uncertain future, Paul calls on the Philippians to rejoice and give thanks to God no matter what the circumstance. God's peace is with us and binds together our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, especially when things around us do not seem peaceful. The second reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way. My beloved, I urge you, Euodia, and I urge Syntech to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, and whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. 
Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent out his slaves to call to those who had been invited to a wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets, and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Many people have given up watching the news, not because they don't believe it. In fact, the opposite. The news has just become so depressing that it's hard to take in. From the coronavirus that has killed over 200,000 Americans, to the environmental disasters, the hurricanes and fires that have ravaged our country, the election has not inspired us to be our better selves, but instead laid bare the sins of us all. For some, it is better to ignore what is going on in the world rather than face the chaos of the world. What a privileged position to be in. But for others, they do their best to escape the reality of chaos rather than the reporting of it. St. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. What strikes me most is not Paul's call for us to rejoice, but for us to do it always. Always. Surely there are times in our lives where we are not able to rejoice. Life is sometimes too hard. But then again, Paul didn't live an easy life. It became profoundly harder after he was converted by God to become a Christian. Paul was struck temporarily blind. He was bow-legged. He was often beaten and imprisoned for what he preached. And in the end, he was beheaded. How can this man, who had such a hard life, always be full of joy? Paul is full of joy because he is full of thankfulness for God's gifts and promises. He is full of joy because he is content with what he has in life and for the concern that Christians show one another. 
The paragraph following our reading for this day is as follows. Paul continues at verse 10. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed, and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of having need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul is full of joy because of the care we show one another, the care that was shown to him. And we are sharing God's love with our neighbors as we share in our ministries here at church, most specifically our food ministries. Whether it is the Northeastern Food Pantry, the Corner Cupboard, or Compassion York, we give food that we have gathered, and it is, and it is distributed to those in most need, those who are hungry so that they can be full and feel our concern for them. We have been given the opportunity to show God's love to our neighbor. And we are like the slaves in our parable today, that God has set a great feast for us, given us plenty, and God calls us to invite others to the feast. We invite them not only with our words, but also with our actions. And today we get to send out a huge invitation we are sharing God's invitation to his love. And yes, we get discouraged sometimes because there are those who refuse God and the gifts that he offers. And we get uncomfortable talking about God because society has taught us that that isn't polite. That there will be those who refuse our invitations. The ones that we expect to be with us in worship that may not show up. And so we cast our net a little wider, inviting without any expectations, inviting those who need to hear God's promise of love the most, and the people will come. For people have heard God's love. Our net has been wide cast during this pandemic. There are those that we have lost touch with that have now joined back in worship digitally. We can show the world how much God's love has changed us. And that we can show God's love to others in the face of the world's chaos. It isn't about who you are in life before you began your relationship with God or what your sins were, but that you eventually arrive at God's table. You have responded to God's invit invitation and have arrived for the wedding feast. Wedding feasts are joyful events. God has given you a place to rejoice. The sacrament of Holy Communion is an extension of God's wedding feast, the feast which prepares us for the eternal feast of heaven, a feast of well-aged wines and rich foods, a feast we attempt to share with others in our lives. This parable comes in the midst of Jesus' argument with the Pharisees, and they refuse to honor God, the King, by attending the feast. Some of them may have gotten some of it right, but they still don't get it when they show up to the feast ill-prepared. They dishonor their host by not being properly prepared for the feast. And we have the opportunity to be prepared. We have been washed clean by the waters of baptism, and we have been given the abundance of God's grace. And God calls us, like the slaves going out, to invite others to this awesome feast. No matter what is happening in the world, let us go rejoicing always and announcing the good news that God has prepared an awesome place for us and has a place for everyone. Amen.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. <clears throat> I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, you fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding, so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold your loving arms, enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people, Israel, to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. 